Hello, today I'm coming to you from Old Town Scottsdale area, which is in the south part of Scottsdale and is the oldest part of Scottsdale. Right now we're on an area called the Scottsdale Waterfront, which is a little bit of a misnomer. You're only talking about 30 yards of a canal, basically, but they've actually done some very attractive things to it. Behind me you can see some restaurants and a couple nice uh, tall condo buildings. There's some excellent um, nightlife over here where the pedestrian bridge is. Scottsdale itself contains about 220,000 people. It's right next to Phoenix. There are more five-star uh, five hotels in Scottsdale than anywhere in the country except New York City. You have one very close to here called the Phoenician. You have the Fairmont, uh, the Four Seasons, and a couple others. The mall that is right across the canal here spans two sides of the street. It's the Scottsdale Fashion Square Mall, and it's one of the 20 largest in the country. Very heavy economy that comes into that mall. Um, so the area has changed a lot. Old, old town Scottsdale, which is that way, um, has been around for a very long time. It still looks the same, uh, and I encourage you, if you come to Phoenix or Scottsdale in the near future, to check it out. You can find great uh, cowboy boots, old uh, saloons, um, and the like. Um, the topic for today is medical marijuana stay active in your system for weeks. That's a question that our doctors get frequently at Arizona MMC, um, and the answer is fairly simple but deserves an explanation. The answer is no, medical marijuana will not stay active in your system for weeks. Whether it's ingested by mouth or smoked or vaporized, marijuana stays active itself uh, psychoactively for two to four hours. The onset of action if somebody smokes or vaporizes marijuana is within about five to 30 minutes. Um, it goes into the lungs and then into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, it goes into the brain and about 1% of the marijuana that's taken in is actually useful uh, and becomes you know, attached to the receptors in the brain. The brain does have receptors for THC, which is the active component of marijuana. The THC that circulates through the rest of the body, there are receptors for that as well, which is one of the reasons why THC can be very effective in situations like Crohn's disease. Um, it can help uh, mitigate the inflammation and pain and cramping associated with Crohn's disease and other intestinal disorders. When marijuana goes into the brain as THC and attaches to receptors there, it has the effects of moderating chronic pain. Um, it has the effects uh, of helping with intraocular pressure for a glaucoma. It uh, has an onset of action there for about four hours. Um, it can also help with nausea and vomiting and, and things like that from its effects, like I said, for two to four hours. Well, there's a, mis there's a myth that people think that it stays in your system for weeks. It does, but not psychoactively. What happens is THC itself goes into fat cells as it circulates around the body, and the fat cells hold on to the THC. It doesn't break it down in the fat cells to the metabolites yet. So over the course of the next few weeks, the active THC is very slowly sent back into the bloodstream, but not nearly in enough of a concentration to cause um, any psychoactive activity. So you don't continue to get high for the next few weeks. Even if a patient is a chronic heavy smoker of marijuana, yes, the new THC that's being taken in will cause the patient to have psychoactivity, and the old THC that is coming out of the fat cells still is not enough to potentiate those effects. So when a patient takes a urine drug test for testing for marijuana, what's being looked at is what's called an inactive metabolite. The inactive metabolite is not active. It's not going to get a patient, you know, psychoactively high. But, so a patient could have used marijuana three weeks ago and that inactive metabolite could still be in the system and they could test positive. So it's inaccurate for an employer or somebody to use that in and of itself as saying you are, that person is actively utilizing marijuana. It may have been three, four weeks since the patient used it. 
but you can still test positive for it. It would be unusual if it was simply the active THC component coming back out of the fat cells. That would be unusual to pop on a positive on a urine drug screen. The best way for anyone to test whether the patient is actively using marijuana at that point in time is a blood test because the blood test can check for the active components of marijuana and the THC to see if the patient is an active user. Um, let's say, for instance, somebody's driving and they have an accident. You want to know were they actively using it at that point in time. I don't know that a blood test is 100% accurate, but it is the most accurate um, that we have. So there you have it. Um, w the explanation of uh, how marijuana does not stay active in your system for weeks and get you high, but it does have some active metabolites and some active THC and a very small concentrations that continue to come out from the fat cells where it went into. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.